In this video, we learn how to calculate the enthalpy change in a reaction by using Hess law. All right, until now, we've talked about enthalpies of reactions, and then we've learned how to measure those using calorimetry. Uh, but calorimetry is an experiment, and it's something that you cannot always do. So uh, it would be useful if you can come up with strategies to calculate the reaction enthalpy without actually having to do any experiments. Right, so there's a few ways to calculate the reaction enthalpy. One of them is using uh, mean bond enthalpies, which is something that we learned to do last semester. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to see two different ways to calculate the reaction enthalpy. One of them is with Hess law, which is what we're going to do right now. And then in the next video, we'll look at uh, the enthalpy formation method. All right, so Hess law. Suppose that you have here a chemical reaction A to give B. And again, the idea here is to calculate what the change in the enthalpy of the reaction is uh, on a per mole basis in going from A to B. All right, so suppose that uh, this reaction uh, is difficult, or maybe the product is unstable, uh, the experiments will be very dif difficult to do. This is something that people don't know how to measure. Just let's assume that that's the case. Well, uh, it turns out that because enthalpy is a state function, okay, as long as your initial step and your final step is the same, it really doesn't matter how you go uh, from the initial point to the final point. The change in overall enthalpy will be the same regardless of the path. right? So if you don't know how to go uh, from A to B directly, but if you know how to go from A to B indirectly, uh, then the change in uh, enthalpy along both paths should be exactly the same. right? So uh, you might imagine that, well, maybe the A to C reaction uh, enthalpy is known, and maybe the C to D reaction uh, enthalpy is known, and then the D to B reaction enthalpy is known, right? Again, because enthalpy is a state function, uh, as long as your initial reagents and final products are exactly the same, the path really doesn't matter to the overall change in enthalpy, right? You can go that route or this route, uh, the change in enthalpy will be the same because your initial and final points are exactly identical. Okay, so, so that is kind of the, uh, the setup of what uh, Hess law is. Uh, to illustrate this law, we're actually going to do a numerical example, which is uh, try to calculate here what the enthalpy of the reaction uh, of graphite, uh, which is a solid, reacting with half molecule of O2, which is a gas, to generate carbon monoxide. This is what we want to calculate. That is uh, delta RHM. This is unknown. All right, and our data is that we know uh, the enthalpies of the combustion reaction of carbon in its graphite form with oxygen to generate carbon dioxide, and then the oxidation of carbon monoxide with oxygen to generate carbon dioxide as well. Okay, so those two reactions that we know are going to be the combustion of graphite with oxygen to generate carbon dioxide. This is known. Uh, this enthalpy is equal to minus 394 kilojoules per mole. And we also know the oxidation of carbon monoxide, which is a gas, with carbon dioxide, with oxygen, to generate uh, carbon dioxide. This is known as well. And this number is equal to minus 283 kilojoules per mole. Right. So the question here is that uh, we have to go from uh, we have to go from reagents, which is carbon with half molecule of oxygen, to generate carbon monoxide. That's that. But again, we don't know what the enthalpy of that process directly. However, we can co construct, we can build an alternative pathway utilizing these two reactions so that uh, my reagents and my products are the same. Okay. So the question is, how do we utilize these two reactions to build an alternative pathway? to go from carbon graphite and uh, half mole of oxygen to carbon monoxide. Well, uh, an easy way to do this is to just recognize what are our reagents and our products. Okay, so this is our reagents in our target reaction. And notice that reagents are here in uh, uh, my available reactions, right? So, so it looks like uh, this reaction looks fine. This just doesn't give me the products that I want, but at least the reagents are fine. We could actually use this as the first step in our alternative pathway. Well, what about the second step? What about products? Well, notice that products, I have here CO, and CO appears as reagents in this equation. Uh, right? so, so this is something that is not very useful. However, 
if I were able to write the reaction backwards, right, so CO2 decomposing into carbon monoxide and half a mole of oxygen, then uh, I would actually have CO in products. Okay, and that's fine, I can, I can do that. All right, the question is, well, if I reverse the reaction, what is going to happen to the enthalpy of that reaction? Well, uh, this is actually a very simple explanation. Notice that because enthalpy is a state function, right, uh, uh, the only thing that matters is the initial step and the final step. Right, so if you have a reaction that has a, a separation in, en in enthalpy between uh, reagents and products that is this much, if you reverse the reaction, what will happen is now your re former reagents are now products, and then your former, your former products are now reagents, right, the initial and final steps are the same but backwards, and the difference in enthalpy between them will be exactly the same but with reverse sign. Right, so there is a very nice property of the enthalpy, which again, if you reverse a chemical reaction, then the enthalpy will have exactly the same magnitude, okay, but different sign. What that means is that I can take then this reaction and write it backwards, and what that will mean is that that change will uh, go, uh, that enthalpy will go from negative to positive, but with the same absolute value. Okay, so I can do that. I can flip that equation and say, well, now I'm going to write it backwards. CO2 decomposing into graphite, uh, sorry, into CO, carbon monoxide, which is a gas, and one half of oxygen, which is a gas, right? Because I have flipped that, then this enthalpy will be exactly that, okay? And now here's actually uh, my alternative, alternative pathway. Notice that if I start with this reaction, and then after this reaction, I do the second reaction, Right, the overall reaction will be exactly what I want. That is that I can add these two reactions up, that is uh, graphite, uh, the CO2 will cancel with that CO2, and then I get into product CO gas, and then in reagents I have a full mole of oxygen, in products I have half mole of oxygen, so then what that means is that uh, this is going to result in just half mole of oxygen into reagents, and that is exactly my target reaction. Right. Uh, therefore, uh, the enthalpy of this reaction will simply be the sum of the enthalpies of the two alternative reactions that I can couple together to generate the reaction that I want. Okay, so the delta RHM for my target reaction will be simply the sum of those two, which is going to be equal to minus 111 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So in this video, we have explained uh, Hess law as a way to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction uh, that is not known from enthalpies of reactions that can be pieced together uh, in order that you uh, go from reagents to products of your target reaction in an alternative manner. Okay, it's uh, a very useful uh, way to calculate the reaction enthalpies, uh, but there are some more advanced methods, which is what we will explain in the next video, and that is the uh, method of the enthalpies of formation.